In this video, we will see how to implement login functionality for our Reddit clone application in Angular. You can check out the written version of this tutorial by clicking on the first link in the description section where you can also find the source code of the application. So in the last video, we implemented the signup functionality. Let's go ahead and implement the login now. The first thing I want to do is, uh, the first thing I will do is of course create the login component. For that, type ngc auth slash login in the terminal. This will create all the required files. After that, open the blog post, which is linked in the description and copy and paste the HTML code for the login page and paste it inside the login.component.html file. And next also copy the CSS code to the login.component.css file. Now, if you compare the CSS files of login and signup components, you can see that the CSS classes login and signup share the same code. So let's extract this code from these files and put it in a common place, styles.css file. The next step is to configure the routes for our login page. So, so when you click on the login button on the header, we'll be navigated to the login page. We can do that by first opening the app.routing.modules.ts file, which is the place we declare all the routes in our Angular application. And then I will be updating the routes array with the path for login component. After that is done, let's open the login component.ts file and let's configure the form group with variable name as login form. And I'm going to initialize the form inside the ng on init block. Here we are defining the form controls for two fields we have inside our form, which is username and password. And we also have defined the validations that these fields require when submitting the form. Now let's open our login component HTML file and sync the validations we did in the component.ts file. Just below the input text for username, I'm going to add a span tag, which is going to access the form control information through login form form group. And here, if the user has touched the input and did not provide any value, we will display the message, please provide a valid username. Now I'm going to do the same thing also for the password field. And in this case, we will display the message, password cannot be empty. If you open the application in the browser and try to click on the input field and click away on somewhere else on the page, you should see the validation message and also the border is marked as red. All right, so let's move ahead and write the logic to make an HTTP call to our login REST API. Similar to what we did for sign up REST API, let's try to access our Swagger API documentation at HTTP localhost 8080 Swagger UI.html. And you see we got a 404 error. This is because after enabling the web MVC, for the course configuration in the, la in the previous videos. We broke the Swagger configuration because now the Spring MVC does not know how to handle the web jars, which is coming as part of the Swagger Spring Fox uh, library. And add below function, just below the course mapping method. So in this method, we are pointing to the location where the web jars and the Swagger UI.html can be found in the class path. After that, restart the application and refresh the Swagger UI.html page, and we should be able to see the Swagger REST API documentation again. Expand the out controller and click on the login API section. And you can see this API accepts username and password as the request payload, and it returns the out token, reference token, username, and expiration time as responses. So now let's go ahead and create the models in our Angular application to hold this data. Back to the Visual Studio code, let's create a file called login request.payload.ts inside the auth login folder. And let's define an interface called login request payload with field definitions for username and password. Both of them are of type string. And I'm going to also create a file login response payload.ts under auth login. And also here I'm going to create an interface with fields auth token, refresh token, expires at, and username. Now let's open the auth service class under the auth shared folder and add a method called as login, which takes the login request object as input. And inside this method, let's make a post call to the login API. Here we want to specify the written type as login response by passing in the generic type to the post method. And let's use the pipe method and map method from the RxJS to map the response to and let's use the pipe and inside that we will use the map method 
which is part of RxJS and uh, we can access the fields which are part of the response here. Now inside this method we are going to store these details inside browser's local storage. For that we need to add a dependency to our project called as ngx web storage. Let's add it to our package.json and run npm install. Once it is completed we can enable ngx web storage in our application by adding the ngx web storage module to the app module.ts file. Just below the HTTP client module, I'm going to declare ngx web storage module.forroot and also make sure to add the import statement from the ng web, ngx web storage package. All right, now we are ready to access the local storage from our application. So let's go back to our auth service class and inject the class local storage service from ngx web storage. And once it is done, let's store the token and user information inside the local storage by typing this dot local storage dot store followed by the key and value of the data we are going to store. Now the last thing remaining is updating our login component. So let's do that by first declaring the login request payload variable just below the form group declaration. And I'm going to initialize this login request payload object inside the constructor. Next, I'm going to create the login method and read the username and password values using the login form form group variable and assign it to the username and password fields inside the login request payload object. And after that, I'm going to call the login method of the auth service by passing in the login request payload object. And as this returns an observable, let's subscribe to this and add a console statement called as login successful. Now we are ready to test our implementation. So let's restart the application to reflect the changes we did to our app module.ts file. So now I'm going to open the application inside the browser and try to log in. So you can see that we don't see that nothing happens on the screen, but if you open the console, you can see the message login successful. And let's open the application tab under the local storage. And let's open the application tab in the console. And under the local storage, you can see the auth token and refresh token information along with the username and expiration time. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next video, we'll see how to make use of the refresh tokens we have configured inside local storage to rotate our auth tokens and we will also start building our homepage. I hope these videos are helpful to you. If they are, please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies and stay safe.